Hello and welcome to Chess with Simon. I'm Simon. I still haven't shaved. I've got some chocolate cake with me now and some milk. So we're going to look at one of Dave Van Cowboy's games. We just saw Winter Owl score a magnificent victory over Dave Van Cowboy. And now let's have a look at his games. So he won the whole tournament. Um, uh, lots of wins. He went through a massive streak of winning here. Look, beat this bloke called Simon Terrington. Um, towards the end, should we just have a look at how that game went? So, so let's look at it from his point of view. Sicilian defence. Look, B Bishop B five check. So this was the same as we saw in the Winter Owl game. I I blocked it the same way. He castled. I played a six the same way. He took all the same. But instead of playing d four, he played c four against me. I played knight f six, which is um. Yeah, it's reasonably standard. The the engine wants, or the database wants e5, or the, and the engine too. Hmm, like f6 feels so natural, doesn't it? He defended it. I, I'm getting lost in my game here, aren't I? I? We're not here to look at my game. Bishop c6, defended it with the rookie one, but then again, it's my channel, do what I want, right? Just indulge myself. Pawn g6, d4, takes, takes, this is all book. Bishop g7, no, it's not book, it's just, this is following um, two 2500 players. Um, I did the Finchetto, but then he took on c6, um, which is not, which is new territory. This is a novelty, as it might be, and actually the engine just has him slightly better. Um, and I castle, so the game goes on. So we won't look at that game because um, shall we look at it? Oh. Come on, let's learn from our mistakes. So I played knight g4. He wants to swap the bishops. I brought the knight back. It's pretty sensible. He defends the pawn. It's funny looking at it from his side. He comes back. Look, I'm better. Queen a5. Not terrible, but a bit dubious. He defends it. Rook c1. Queen b4. I'm still a bit better. Now this undue harassment of the bishop was not really considered that good because it allows knight d5. I can then defend it with a queen. He then again attacks this pawn. I advance the pawn, but this is bad. What should I have done? Rook a e8. Defend the pawn. Not advancing like this because the knight check. Oh, and then he's winning a pawn here. Look. So the point is. Oh, I see. That allows the queen to take there. And all of a sudden, look. And this moves terrible. Look. He takes it off with the rook. Oh, I, I remember what happened here. This was terrible. <laughs> I think then I get mated really annoyingly. F6. So he gets my piece. I get his piece. Check. And it's mating one. It's quite a hard checkmate to see in my defence with the knight covering g8. It's so annoying. So what do I learn from this? What I learn from this is... Uh, the real problem, I believe, now, I think... Look, the engine thinks knight c6 is a better move, and of course it is. This move was just a bit aimless, because actually knight d5 is so strong. And um, if I take on e3, he's taking on e7 with check. And yeah, queen b7 is fine, but after this, maybe f6 after this. And now it's just too many mistakes. Now it's just kind of busted, because the pawn on d6 has gone. Anyway, that was that game. We learn. Okay, we're going to look at Dave Van Cowboy's game against a much better player, Eldar. So, um, they had a draw to begin with, and then um, Eldar, he, he, Eldar won his 16th game, but Dave Van Cowboy won the 9th game. So, we're going to look at the one that Dave Van Cowboy won. It's a good game. It's a good game, actually. So, He's opening e4, and it seems to be that that is his preferred opening of choice. He's a bit of a Bobby Fischer best by test pawn e4 person. Aldar plays the French. Uh, knight c3. Rubenstein French taking on e4. Knight d7, knight f6. So this is all really book stuff. Now, the most common moves here are bishop f6. I mean, sorry, knight takes f6. Hmm... Bishop d3 or bishop g5. But Dave and Cowboy innovates. Plays knight c3. Now on positional grounds, 
this seems a bit odd because it's blocking the c pawn which you could use to defend d4 or possibly play c4 um but i suppose the logic for it is you say well white's got a bit more space white's avoiding the exchanges which is helpful when you have more space and um you know the game goes on and also this is a novelty i mean this is only once in the database and um it's certainly not you know it's certainly not in sound i think was it played by michael basman gosh there we go um I'm not sure if that was the Mike Bassman who played the Grob. Should we find out if it's the Mike Bassman? Actually, maybe we can click on it here. Oh, it won't be, will it? It was played in... It's an import. Michael J. Bassman. I'm having a bit of a funny video today. Who cares? Michael J. Bassman. Yeah, it's the Mike Bassman, who um, Michael John Bassman, who wrote the Killer Grob. Um, I'll be doing a video on the Killer Grob at some point. It's absolutely um, so. Mike Bassman played this, a very original thinker, and clearly, Dave on Cowboy is following in his illustrious footsteps. Okay, let's get back on the track. Um, Bishop e seven, Bishop d three. So White's going to win this game, right? Um, here black's a bit better castles pawn b6 very natural to defend that bishop that's blocked in by the e-pawn knight e5 I wouldn't have seen this move uh, and actually neither does the engine because well I just worry it's a bit premature for that but um, I suppose you're targeting the c6 square but um, black can cover it and also just take the knight on e5 anyway black's a little bit better here bishop f4 to defend that advanced knight c5 is a great move undermining that kind of structure and just hitting the d-pawn so now uh white exchanges off and black's appreciably better um and black's still appreciably better so white's hitting the queen queen's come off and now so what about this move h3 why is that happening well the short answer is that's happening to create air for the king to stop back rank checkmates and to give a space to hide the bishop away if it's required for instance well if it's required if it's harassed by the king side knight although it's not obvious how that can happen actually so it's probably more about avoiding back rank you know black's bishops are beautiful aren't they just sort of raking onto the king black does the same thing uh, again maybe to avoid back ranks Centralising the rooks. Uh, the engine doesn't like this move. Although it seems natural just to exchange off some pieces. The engine wants a6. a6, bishop e2. I mean, you could also play bishop f1, but bishop e2. Okay, so black achieves the aim of exchanging off the pieces. Now white's just gaining space, uh, taking away squares from the black bishops. And then there's this fascinating move. And the minute white makes it, it makes sense. But it's quite a hard move to find because it's just reducing options for the black pieces. Uh, the engine wants bishop c8, which is very clever. Um, so bishop c8, so, what, so there's no bishop c7 because that blunders the d7 bishop. Rook just takes. Um, okay, so the the engine just wants bishop c6 and uh, and the uh, the bishop on c8 is just a bit inactive. So black plays this move, um, and now white basically starts harassing these rooks. So firstly driving this one to an inactive square, and then uh, advancing the pawn. Now actually the engine's not so keen on that. The engine wants bishop d6. But now, unfortunately, under the pressure, and, and these guys are both short on time, black plays bishop d8, and this means the rook is basically trapped uh, on f8. I mean, so white's got an exchange. And what you see now, really, is that white just goes ahead and exploits this exchange. Uh, the engine wants bishop c6 here. That's what I would have played, bishop c6. Just get the bishops off. Um, and anyway, white plays it here. And so off they come. So all of a sudden you've got uh, an advanced pawn to worry about. I'm not sure if white can actually defend that. So I have to 
rook c8, which is the natural move. Okay, white's going to win a pawn back in exchange for it. Black's going to get another pawn. So let's do a quick count. So now, actually, black's done a great job here. Black is um, a pawn up and then exchange down. And the the engine move here is bishop d4. It's a really good move. Um, it kind of forces rook f3. But the rook's kind of awkward there. Uh, rook b2. And now I think the plan probably looks to me like doubling on the seventh rank and immediately that f7 pawn on, on the light square looks weak so black's uh pushing but the doubling's really powerful check there um and now so the, the engine wants a quick g4 i think white plays g4 just a move later but we're, we're also to good effect threatening this pawn here so white gets a pawn black gets a pawn let's have a quick count so it's two pawns each so if all the pawns came off, um, then black might have a chance of drawing. Uh, but that's really hard to achieve because white uh, is much more active and has a material advantage. So there's no way of defending that B pawn, although the engine wants to push. No, he doesn't. He wants to play rook f3, which is what black played. White hoovers up. Black plays here. Now... Uh, what occurred to me is you can take twice on f6 and win the pawn end game. So um, taking it's probably not the best move. Well, it depends. Everything wins, right? So maybe it is the best move. I mean, I looked at that and I just thought, well, the pawn end game is going to be won, but it's not trivial to win. So uh, let's have a look at it. Takes, 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 takes. So. Uh, Apparently, King G2 and King F1. I love a pawn endgame. King G2. So let's look at um, Black's sternest defence is King E6. King F3, get the king in front of the pawns. I would say taking the opposition is probably the best defence, although everything's losing here according to table base. D5. I want to play King E3. King E5. Let's keep the opposition. Pawn F3. Can't hold it. F6. King d4, this is pretty clearly winning, king e6, king e4, king f6, king d5 I would play, king f7, and we're just going to work our way in. Now, uh, advanced players will see this is gone, but just for everybody, just everyone might be interested in this, look here, gone. Basically black can't hold on to the pawn. Okay, so yeah, that's one way of doing it, but um, probably not the best because it's not clear that that pawn game was won so white uh some nice tactics here from white check here and all of a sudden there's all sorts of checkmating threats but there is also i mean by the way white's down to nine seconds wow we you know so really short on time um finds this check here fine wins a bishop and that's enough because white's a pawn up and a rook up and there's going to be a parallel checkmate on the back and the very best black could do which is probably not even achievable is to put a rook in the way and, and give the rook up but yeah it's kind of gone with an increment of two seconds white's not going to let this go so really good game by both players i think um i think knight c3 was an interesting intervention innovation against Intervention. That's a mixture between innovation and invention. Knight c3 was a really interesting innovation, a tribute to the great Michael Basman uh, in a famously drawn game in 1986. <laughs> um, but, you know, it's a decent move. Maybe I'll play it against Eldar. But in reality, let's remember that black was better for most of the middle game. So uh, might be a bit risky, actually to try or at the very least I think on the white side you'd probably after b6 you want to play queen e2 or rook e1 rather than knight e5 but well done to both players I mean they both finished Eldar finished um, where did Eldar finish fourth excellent result and and he produced some excellent games we will look at one of Eldar's games next